in fact, there was not an investigation by the responsible authorities. No criminal proceedings were instituted against any police. There are a number of reasons for this. Failures by the police at police station Chaya to perform their responsibilities adequately on 12 August 2001 and on the days following, and an apparent want of due attention to their responsibilities by the responsible authorities are primary factors. Luba Boskowski had no authority or powers in respect of the responsible authorities, that is, the investigative judge and the public prosecutor, who were not within the Ministry of Interior. It is not shown that the failure of police to perform their duties is attributed to his orders or was known to Luby Boskowski during the period charged in the indictment or that he sh it should have been anticipated by him. It is not established, therefore, that further reporting or other action by Luby Boskowski to satisfy his obligation under Article 7.3 of the statute was required. While the circumstances disclosed by the evidence reveal a serious failure of the functioning of the police and the responsible Macedonian authorities at the time, it has not been established that Luba Boskowski failed to take the necessary and reasonable measures for the punishment of the police which were required of him by Article 7.3 of the statute. As already indicated, the indictment charges the accused Johan Tarchilovsky with individual criminal liability under Article 7.1 of the statute for ordering, planning, instigating, or aiding and abetting the crimes referred to in Article 3 of the statute and described in the indictment, and with committing them by participation in a joint criminal enterprise. Contrary to the case advanced for Johann Tarchilovsky, the evidence satisfies the Chamber that he played a prominent role in the events of 12 August 2001 in Lubotin. On 10 and 11 August, he was in charge of logistical preparations for the operation. Support was provided by the police and the army. He coordinated this and mortar and other support provided by the army. On 12 August, Johann Tarchilovsky personally led the police operation and was with the police as they moved through the village. Although not formally appointed, Johann Tarchilovsky exercised effective leadership and control of the police in the village that day. The actions of the police in the village were at his direction. The Chamber is satisfied, therefore, that the accused Johann Tarchilovsky is criminally responsible for ordering, planning and instigating the offences committed in the village by police. In view of his direct role in ordering the commission of these offences, it is not the case that he merely aided and abetted their commission. The evidence does not establish that Johann Tarchilovsky participated in a joint criminal enterprise, as alleged in the indictment. The reserve police with him in the village were acting under his orders, not as fellow participants in a joint criminal enterprise. Further, as detailed in the written judgment, 
the chamber is satisfied that Johann Tartulowski was himself acting under orders in carrying out the police operation in Lubotin. The evidence does not enable the person or re persons responsible for the orders to Johann Tartulowski to be identified. The circumstances confirm it was a person or persons superior to him. It is to be noted that the police operation on 12 August occurred on the day before the signing of the Ohrid Agreement, which brought to an end the fighting between the Macedonian security forces and the NLA. The pattern of conduct in the village by the police discloses in the finding of the chamber a deliberate and indiscriminate attack on residents of Lebotan of Albanian ethnicity, involving acts of murder and cruel treatment, as well as the indiscriminate and wanton destruction of houses and other property of ethnic Albanian residents of Lebotan. It was not a law enforcement operation to locate and arrest NLA members. The, prominent, the predominant objective of this police operation was to retaliate against persons of Albanian ethnicity in the village for actions of the NLA, which the village was thought to have harboured or supported, in killing ethnic Macedonian soldiers most especially in respect of a landmine attack at a location close to Lebotan on 10 August 2001. Eight soldiers were killed in this attack and others were wounded. The operation was not only a means of retaliation, it also would serve as a warning of the consequences of support in the village for the NLA. Luba Boskowski, would you please stand? The Chamber finds you not guilty on all counts in the indictment. The Chamber orders that you be released from the United Nations Detention Unit, subject to the completion of the necessary modalities. You may be seated. Johan Tachulowski, will you please stand? The Chamber finds you guilty, pursuant to Article 7.1 of the Statute, of the following offences. Count 1, murder. A violation of the laws or customs of war under Article 3 of the Statute. For having ordered, planned and instigated the murder of Rami Yusufi, Suleiman Bairami and Muharrem Ramadani. Count two, wanton destruction. A violation of the laws or customs of war under Article three of the statute for having ordered, planned and instigated the wanton destruction of the houses or other property of the 12 ethnic Albanian residents identified in the written judgment. Count three, cruel treatment, a violation of the laws or customs of war under Article three of the statute for having ordered, planned and instigated the cruel treatment at Am Adem Amatovsky's house of the 13 ethnic Albanian residents identified in the written judgment and the cruel treatment at Bracha's house of the 10 ethnic Albanian residents identified in the written judgment. With respect to sentence, the chamber has set out in the written judgment the many matters that have been taken to account in determining the appropriate sentence. In particular, the chamber has taken into account the sentencing structure in the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia in 2001, 
and sentences imposed in this tribunal for offences in some way similar to those of which you have been convicted. The Chamber would emphasise that you were a relatively junior officer of the police acting under orders when you planned, instigated and ordered the commission of these offences. This does not excuse your conduct, but it affects the degree of the seriousness of your conduct. You are sentenced to a single sentence of 12 years imprisonment. Full credit will be given for the time you have spent in custody. You will remain in the custody of the tribunal pending the finalisation of arrangements for your transfer to the state where you will serve your sentence. You may sit down. This concludes this trial. The Chamber will now adjourn. I race for you, Willoughby.